Hi folks, welcome from to family members and anyone else who might be joining. This is Brooke from Just Roots Farm and welcome to our unboxing series. In these videos, we discuss recipes, tricks, and tips for using the vegetables and fruits in your farm shares. You can find links to all the recipes in the video description below and please visit previous month's unboxing videos. You'll find more recipes and how to use the items in your farm share. Don't forget to join us for kitchen support hours. We offer one-on-one -on -one calls or video chats with our staff members to help you find creative ways to use your CSA items. It's free. You can book us whenever you'd like. Just visit this link, bit.ly slash kitchen support. P.S. Exciting news. Our community care coordinator, Irene, will alternate making unboxing videos with me. So you'll get a fresh face with fresh ideas for your box shares. Woohoo! All right, without further ado, let's get into it. In this video, you'll find demonstrations of easy, crunchy, and gooey sweet potato hash, a simple tomato and green pepper salad, tips for storing those summertime herbs, and kid-approved raw veggie snacks. Here we go. Let's start off with beets and green leaf lettuce. So this is a tuna and white bean salad. Use your green leaf lettuce even though it says spinach, it's even better. Uh, canned tuna and canned beans make it really easy and accessible. You can have it in the pantry, but it's easy and delicious. Those fresh beets that are freshly boiled are so yummy. You can use fresh dill and some red onion with it. For info on how to boil beets, we put a link in the description below with an easy recipe for that. We've got three recipes that utilize carrots. The first being a carrot and ginger soup. It's vegan and gluten-free. We also have a roasted brown butter, honey, and garlic carrot recipe. And lastly, one that uses your green beans as well. It's a roasted green bean and carrot dish. Make sure to check out those recipes. They're easy, simple, tasty, wonderful. And for broccoli, we're gonna feature a Mediterranean broccoli quiche. This uses some olives, Romano cheese. If you've never had broccoli in an omelet, try it out, it's super delicious. Let's move on to some demos. Our first recipe is gonna be crispy sweet potato hash. I'm gonna start off by cutting the ends of the sweet potato like this, and I'm gonna use a grater on the biggest setting. We'll grate that sweet potato until it's completely grated. Add two tablespoons of cornstarch. Give that a really good stir. Mix it up. And you can grab a nonstick frying pan or a cast iron skillet could work too. You're going to turn it to medium high and add two tablespoons of butter. I use dairy-free butter. Use whatever you like and get that butter sizzling on the pan. You're gonna do that before you drop in your sweet potato. Then use about a third of the mixture. You're gonna to have to do it in batches. Uh, lay it out onto the pan so it's not overlapping and press it down with your spatula so it gets nice and flat. I only use salt for the seasoning. It caramelizes so well, the sweet potatoes get really sweet. So I put in just a pinch of salt and you're going to leave it on here until it gets brown on the bottom and you'll flip it. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to flip. It doesn't have to stay as one piece, but sometimes that's easier. This is what it should look like with that browning. I'm going to cook it a little bit longer and then I drain it on a paper towel so it gets off any excess butter. And then voila, delicious sweet potato hash. Next up, we'll demo a simple green pepper and tomato salad, fresh for summer. You're going to start off by sort of filleting the bell pepper. You want to work around the seeds. So that's what I'm doing here, just using a knife to cut out everything on the outside of the seed. And you can use the little butt end there and the sides if you want. Then I'm going to cut it into strips and then into chunks. So I'm kind of doing a big thick dice for these peppers. We want them to be crunchy. Add those to a bowl and then we'll move on to tomato. Again, I'm doing thick slices here. Careful not to cut into the center of the tomato. I'm cutting all the way around it. So slices on either side and then I'll have to leave the little middle piece out, which is a little bit stemmier. 
Then I'll further dice those tomatoes so they're around the same size as the green pepper. Then we'll use one clove of garlic, kind of a medium to large clove. We're going to have this raw, and I'm going to mince it as finely as I can. So I took off the peel, cut off the root end, and then did a really fine mince. We're going to let that marinate for a little bit so it won't be as intense, all that raw garlic. I'm going to use a fresh onion or a regular onion. I'm going to use one half of this small onion, so just keep that in mind. I'm not using too, too much. And I cut these into sort of strips, leaving the end attached, and then I dice them. And so they're quite a bit smaller than the tomato and the green pepper chunks. Next up, a little bunch of parsley. It's nice to add fresh herbs into this. You don't have to. You can also use, you know, a teaspoon of dried parsley. I left the ends and just cut the leaves. I did a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. You could do apple cider vinegar, white vinegar. And I did a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Next up is a teaspoon of cumin. Gives it great flavor. And then some salt to taste. You can also put some pepper if you'd like. I did like a quarter teaspoon of salt and a few dashes of pepper. Give it a good stir. And then I'm going to let it marinate for a minute. So I'm going to seal it with some, you could put it in a Ziploc or you could use saran wrap like I am and put it in the fridge for a bit until I'm ready to serve. Very quickly, I want to go over some tips for keeping herbs fresh. First is the water method. I'm going to pull off the bottom leaves of whatever fresh herb I have. And really, just simply, I'm going to fill a cup with water so that it does not hit the first leaf. You don't want those kind of rotting in there. And I'm going to stick the herb in there. You can put it in the fridge or leave it out on the counter. The second method is stuff those herbs into a Ziploc bag, and I just put a piece of paper towel in it and seal it up. The paper towel absorbs some of the extra moisture that you don't want on those herbs, and they're going to last for quite some time. Our last demo is for parents who want their kiddos to eat more vegetables. Uh, cutting your vegetables in fun shapes and making little creatures can really help kids get excited about trying new veggies. So here I'm demonstrating how to cut carrot into flowers. You just cut out little wedges. You can eat those if you'd like. And then slice it. And I do pretty thick slices so it stays together. You can also try different shapes like uh, squares by cutting off four sides of the carrot and then slicing like that. And then you can do triangles. So that would be cutting off three sides like a triangle. And of course you can do circles if you want. This is making, you can use cucumber or you can use zucchini or summer squash, but we're going to make little roll-ups with toothpicks. You just stab it at the top and then alternate flopping sides and you get this little springy roll-up that are really fun for kids to eat and it's nice and thin and tender. So I also made a basically like a ladybug or a bug. So I used an end of a tomato, a little bit of an olive, like half an olive, some basil for the wings. You can make little antennae out of other vegetables you might have, or legs as well, like this. I just make a really thin cut. And then you can poke holes into your critter. Those are my ladybug spots and I poured balsamic vinegar over there it stays in the spots and there you go all right folks on behalf of just roots farm thanks for joining us we hope you learned some new and inspiring ideas for using those CSA box ingredients and we just want to send a special shout out and warm heart going out to the folks at world farmers we're so thankful for all the wonderful vegetables that they produce and know that they're struggling really hard with floods from the last few storms that we've had and uh, we wish the best for world farmers and their recovery and that their fields dry out soon. Um, thank you all for joining us and we'll see you next time in August. Take care. Bye-bye.